the basic story of Chaos Walking has, you know, it's it's obviously a heightened science fiction adventure, but at its core, um, and what's interesting about the movie is that it's really just a story about a boy and a girl. And so in the end, not to give anything away, you know, instead of trying to blow up a battle station, we're just hoping that they can work it out, even though they're on this alien planet. Writing the noise is a huge challenge because for something like that, you need to have a consistent rule. Like, when do we hear the noise? The idea is that it's kind of constantly happening, but then that would drown out any scene you could try to write. And sometimes that's the point. It's like people are just inundated with it. So, you know, and I'd seen previous drafts where they're having, you see the characters' lines and then they're, what their noise is doing like at the same time. And it's like, it's, it's such, a, such a unique concept that it almost breaks screenplay format. Like you don't even know how to write it. So we had to figure out a way to use it to tell the story and not just overwhelm every moment. So it's kind of like with Todd, you know, there'll be a scene of just Todd and Viola talking and then his noise is almost like a commentary track. It's like another character that like interjects, adds little things. Sometimes just Todd will say one thing and then the noise will say the exact opposite. Viola really doesn't know who to believe. New World is uh, futuristic. Uh, it's um, looking a uh, hundred or more years from now um, at a time when we have managed to colonize another planet. We have managed to um, perfect space travel to that degree. Uh, people travel from Earth to New World uh, in a state of cryosleep and are woken up when they get there. Um, and really what we're looking at is there has been um, one journey from Earth to New World and they, there were supposed to be others coming afterwards, but they never came. Um, and the, the world itself is uh, very Earth-like in a lot of ways. Um, uh, obviously, that is what would be necessary for humans to be able to exist on another planet. But then we will just glimpse little uh, pieces of um, the, the flora and fauna that will show us what's different about this world, as well as a very big difference, which is that on this planet, all men have something called the noise um, and noise is when their thoughts are projected outside of their heads so they can be seen and or heard by everybody around them. That's really the big difference about New World. In New World the men have noise and because when we are introduced to the story we are only with men we don't realize until a little later on that women do not have noise and that's something that um todd wasn't necessarily told and so when he sees viola for the first time and she doesn't have noise that's new information for him but that causes obviously all sorts of problems uh, in terms of men and women being able to live together and that's something that we really have been exploring and, and digging into because it's such an interesting topic to explore The development of Todd um, from boy to man is such an important thing in the books um, and we've really even taken it a step further in the movie um, and a lot of that is, is something that Tom Holland has brought to the role. Um, we are really playing into the fact that he's been raised in this, this community, survivalist community of men where, you know, you're not they don't take the time to teach you much you, you really he's just had to to learn as he goes and so he hasn't come in with a lot of knowledge and a lot of manners and a lot of common sense um general knowledge any of that so he's really coming at things from quite a primitive uh, standpoint in a lot of ways it's interesting because the film has ended up spanning uh, different parts of all three books in the the trilogy not necessarily in any one order not necessarily as like every bit from every book um but the but this script has ended up encompassing actually more of the world than i think one would um assume and i think because so much in the book is descriptive of the noise because we're able to do that in an audio visual way um I think it's helpful 
having that because you're able to tell the story probably in a more condensed way because the noise does so much of the work that the book has to do in a narrative way. Without the noise, there is no issue. Without the noise, there are people living as people do. And within this story, it's the noise that forms any sort of contention. It's the disparity with men and women having noise and not. That is the sort of history of New World. And it's a massive um, issue for Todd and Viola to overcome. So really, with the noise had to be intense. Like, and it's, it's, it's an intense part of the experience of chaos walking. Viola and Todd meet sort of by chance. And what is amazing in the story is uh, you, Todd can't really explain why he's drawn to Viola, but he basically, well, I mean, he's told to as well by Ben Killian, but he leaves everything he knows in order to help her, which is amazing. Um, and it's, and that's, and that I think is why we did the additional photography too, because it's quite a, it's a challenging relationship to make work because there has to be like a pull, but also you have to understand why they stay together. And obviously he's super helpful to Viola. So it's clearer that way. He brings a lot to it. He has to be a young man on the cusp of proper adulthood. He has to um, make the audience understand why he's with Viola. He, and, and a lot of that, honestly, and it's, it's in the trailer, a lot of that is his relationship with Manchi. Like he loves his dog so, so much. And it's wonderful. I remember someone saying it on set when we were filming. It's wonderful seeing characters liking something. It makes you like them. So it's like a really wonderful way in to Todd to see how he is with his dog. I think Kale's Walking serves a broader audience in that it's the thing that you always hope from sort of bigger action films is that there's like a real heart to the story. And the heart is um, sort of Viola and Todd's relationship and them going on this journey and what that does to everyone else and what it means for literally a whole planet of people. I would say that Far Branch is uh, sort of rural, it's farming, it's a farming uh, town and, and they grow their own vegetables, they grow their own fruit and they have their own food, they have their own way of living. I think it sort of takes things right back to like the beginning of time, how you would have to uh, exist and live and I think most things are handmade there, um, but that's how she sort of set people to work, you know, it takes away what we would know as technology, they just don't have technology there. It's all, well, they have a little, but the very smallest amount and the rest is all up to them. Mass um, is like, I feel like the dad of the piece, like dad of the company, as opposed to the piece, because Mayor Prentice is like the, op they're like two opposites. It's really strange to see him play this character who is not what Mass is at all. Mass is so lovely and funny and respectful and we'll, we'll be in the scene and we'll lock eyes and we'll make sure that we know what we're doing and we'll figure it out together and then hit the, the, the road running. And he's just been great to, to be you know, a part of it, great to work with. And then to put when he throws the energy into to my apprentice, he just transforms. He's great, you know. It's, and then we then it's, it really is Hildy and my apprentice standing off against each other, which I think is so cool because we really like each other in real life. So it's kind of great to be able to transform that way. David's a, a friend of mine, so. Um, it's weird to see him as Aaron because it's like a stark difference. David is very measured and calm and knowledgeable and really cool. And I, I have spent some time with him talking about m numerous different things. And 
He is just the consummate professional. Uh, having him on set is always great. Um, but, uh, but Aaron is something that is slightly unhinged and troubled and violent because of that. Um, so our, our scene was manic, but I knew I was safe because I knew the person behind that character was, is brilliant. I don't know why the men have the noise and the women don't, but I feel like it's a real, maybe like a subtle comment on actual reality. Um, the idea that I don't think you really need, I don't think women really need noise because I feel like we wear our hearts on our sleeves more so. So you can see what's going on. It was about information overload. And it was felt like with um, advent of smartphones and interconnectivity and uh, social media, it felt like the world, which was already loud, I think, I feel like, um, especially to, you know, if you're kind of a, any way a sensitive soul. <laughs> and I thought the world is getting louder. We have, we have equi equipped ourselves with these computers handheld computers um, that contain more processing power than anything that sent them into the moon. And we use them to shout. And, um, and so I thought, well, what if, what if the next logical step was that you couldn't get away? You had no choice and you had to share and you had to hear what other people share, you were forced to. And how much worse if that happened and you were young? Chaos Walking is about a boy called Todd Hewitt who lives in a town called Prentice Town, but Prentice Town is not at all like other towns. Uh, there are no women in the town. There was a terrible war just after Todd was born, and uh, the war killed half of the men and all of the women, and the town is dying. Um, and he's the last boy born in this town, and he's the last boy who will ever be born. And, uh, and culturally, I wondered, you know, what would that be like? What would that feel like? How would you grow up? How would that change you as a, not just as a man, but as a person? And the other thing that um, is different about Prentice Town is the noise, which is a, uh, a phenomenon where you hear everyone else's thoughts all the time, whether you want to or not. And if you think about what that might actually be like, it's, it's really horrifying because, you know, your brain is a messy place. He says it in the books, men's minds are messy places and noise is the living, breathing face of that mess. And, uh, and it starts from there and he views the world one way, he has been taught that the world is this way, that there are no women, that you know, there is one enemy, that there is really no future. And then one day he finds a girl who shouldn't exist. She shouldn't be there. Everything he's been taught is contrary to that. And she's called Viola, and her presence is a danger to her, it's a danger to him, it's a danger to the town. And she and he and Viola have to go on the run. I got tired of stories where the boy was brave and a little bit thick and the girl was brainy, a little bit sassy, and together they solved crimes. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I just thought, why can't they be equally brainy and equally scared and equally mess up and equally um, sort of glorious in their curiosity? And, and that's what I really wanted. It was really about um, making her like the teenage girls I know. Um, you know, so it was more a realistic thing. It wasn't some conscious choice to, I, I mean, I don't, the, the phrase strong hair, strong girl, strong female, um, is used a lot in YA. And I worry that it gets in the way of them being, of, of her being fully human. You know, of course she's going to be strong, but there are moments where she's going to be weak, just like Todd. And there's moments where she's going to be incredibly clever, but there's moments where she's going to make a, a stupid mistakes, just like Todd, just like human beings do. And so that's what I want. That's what I want. That's what I want my nieces to see. That's what I want, you know, young readers to see. I want to see a fully human, fully realized, complicated person, because that's what a teenage years are about. They're about discovering that you are a contradiction. The noise is everything you think, everything you fantasize, everything you wish. Um, everything you believe, everything you might not believe, it's, you know, it's, it is the human mind completely unedited. I, 
actors bring so much more than you think they do. They're not just speaking words. They are, they are, they are adding all, all their experience and all their choices um, and doing things that you would never think of and bringing your character to life. It's amazing. I mean, it's, novels are not collaborative. And um, the collaborative experience of a movie when it's working well, when it's doing well, that's where you see the magic, because it's them doing something that I couldn't do, um, reading maybe something that they couldn't do, but it's the best work of both people coming together and making something bigger, and that's, that's great. The story is centered around Todd Hewitt, um, a young guy who basically uh, has this gift to be able to minimize his noise. And the noise is the thing that's taken over all the men in Prentice Town, which is where we get introduced to this story. Um, and it's overtaken their lives. And there's this darkness around uh, the history of Prentice Town and, um, and specifically around the mayor. and. Um, you know, the, the community and the environment he's created in Prentice Town. Uh, the story is shaken up when Viola appears and uh, it's the first woman uh, that, that Todd has seen. And then the fear sets in of what her intention is, why her ship was coming. Uh, and Mayor Prentice, the leader of the town, decides to go on a, a bit of a witch hunt to find her and um, Todd and convince him that his cause is with us and not with her. Uh, and madness ensues, chaos ensues. Benoist is uh, our, our main character in this movie. Uh, it's, it's a funny way of thinking about things, but it really is. You know, we, in most scene preparation I do, and I think all the actors on this set, you know, you think about your subtext and what you say with your face but don't actually say out loud and, and what your internal you know, dialogue is. And, uh, with this, it's all out there in our noise. And so um, you have to be really specific about uh, your your intention and, and what you're saying with your physicality. And it's been a wild card. I mean, at first I, I, I had to wrap my head around the concept as a whole and then actually acting with that as a piece to the puzzle was, was really quite insane. Tom Holland is uh, is a great guy. We we first met uh, on a press tour. He was doing press for Spider Man. I was doing press for Jumanji, and uh, we hit it off right away. Had a great time, and and um, a couple months later, this came up, and it was just really exciting because when you when you meet somebody and you like them outside of a work environment, it makes that much easier and more fun in the work environment. And we got on set, and and you know he he really is the 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 leader of this group, and and uh, sets the tone for everyone on set, and. Um, He's obviously an amazing actor and doing a great job in this film, but uh, also a great guy, you know, and uh, although, our, again, our, our relationship on camera is very tense and uh, we have a laugh about that off camera sometimes <laughs> because I'm, I'm so mean to him, but, you know, it's part of the job. So beyond the way it looks and feels, which I think will be visually very stunning and the noise being an element no one's ever seen in film before. I think you're talking about a very human story at the core uh, about these two people that, that need each other in a lot of ways and, and don't know how much they can trust each other. Uh, but seeing it all unfold is gonna be uh, something I think the audience falls in love with and gets frustrated with and laughs at at times and um, also you know want to see the final outcome. I became aware that he was a, a, a big singer and a musician, uh, but um, it kind of like passed over my head. Maybe it's a generation thing, and my, my kids were screaming at me when I told them, it's like, Dad, don't you know him? But so he's always been an actor for me, and a, and a brilliant one uh, as they come. I mean, he's, um, he's very energetic, he's very on, on the target. Sometimes you can be very ambitious as an actor on your own behalf, uh, which is, uh, it's an obvious thing you should be, but more importantly should be on the on the behalf of the character and on the film. And I think that he's right on the ball. He he is doing everything and he will definitely try out a lot of different things, but always having in mind what the character is and what the film is. He uh, he's he's lovely to work with and he's lovely to watch.
Tom is just a brilliant young actor. He's done this for many years, uh, and 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 not only on films. He's also done stage work, right? Uh, and and there's there's always something that comes from stage work in the sense that you you have a robustness. You have a, a you never become fatigue. You can go on and on and on, and he he can adapt to new ideas, which you do a lot on theater. Uh, and then he has. Obviously, like any movie star should have, he has the ability to go in and cling. He's there, and the camera sees it, and and uh, so uh, he's wonderful to work with. Yeah, I mean the same goes with Daisy as it goes with Tom, and Daisy she has now proven quite a few times that she's a very, very talented young actress, uh, and um, and having that ability that. Not only to be able to act, but uh, that the camera loves you, and uh, and uh, that's what makes the big stars. You know, and when the camera is in love with you, they, as it is with Daisy, uh, it will pick up all the little things she does, and 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 for that reason, she will be a great toy storyteller. Mm -hmm. I mean, the noise uh, plays a vital part, obviously, uh, but to the men, they've been around it for twenty odd years. Uh, so it's it's part of their day. It's, it, it, they take it for granted. There are a few times, obviously, where we take in and use noise uh, as a dramatic effect, where where we are forcing somebody to reveal their noise, uh, and then it was a technical thing whether like it manifests itself on the side, above, around the character. It's just little technical things what we are looking at. But in general, people trying to to keep the noise out, meaning that we are not reacting to noise constantly that would be complete madness but it's constantly there mm -hmm. so you can yeah you can imagine a radio that that plays non-stop with a lot of lot of annoying music uh, and that's the kind of world they live in but they they don't take it in they have to keep it out you're aware of it when you're uh in a scene with somebody, because more often than not, you're reacting to something they're emitting, you know, uh, whether it's um, a visual image or actual words. So you're often playing off of things that aren't there. Um, uh, and uh, which, uh, you know, I guess is no different really than, you know, working with uh, uh, in, a, in a CG heavy project in terms of reacting to things that aren't there. My sense of, of Todd is a guy who, a kid who is this, uh, you know, in be somewhere in between that, you know, boy and man. And, uh, um, and I think Tom has that great quality of being um, like a fully emotionally formed human being, you know, uh, who, which he is, you know, he's a really smart guy and, uh, and, and, you know, uh, uh, really astute and, uh, and, and, uh, uh, and can, you know, captivate a room. And yet he, he has, still has that, um, sort of unjaded, <laughs> somewhat, you know, innocence and vulnerability, um, uh, that, you know, Hollywood hasn't turned to, you know, uh, poison yet so <laughs> he's got he's got those two qualities and I think those are kind of perfect for uh, uh, for Todd look I think the obvious the thing that will uh, in my mind as far as what I can tell is that the uh, the themes uh, of this movie of this you know uh, seem to be uh, fairly relevant uh, um, in terms of um, gender and uh, uh, and what defines a relationship and coming of age uh, um, and you know um, individuality uh, over you know the masses you know uh, I think those themes are really uh, prevalent in this and I think even though there's action and CGI and, uh, you know, and a lot of the, uh, uh, a lot of the, 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 uh, 
accoutrement of a big blockbuster movie, I think underneath it there are, you know, uh, there are characters that um, deal with those with those uh, uh, issues um, uh, within the context of this world and this story that uh, that I don't know if uh, necessarily if if other films uh, are hitting those points quite as hard. When I came on to the movie, um, Tom Holland and Daisy Ridley were already set, but those were the only two actors that were set. And I, I'm of the firm belief that in a movie that is as much of a fantastical science, you know, leap of faith as this kind of movie is, pretty, you know, in terms of its based in science fiction and so on, you really, I think, need the best actors you can have. So um, I think that we put together a pretty remarkable cast. David Oyelo, um, Cynthia Revo, um, Damien Bashir, Moss Michelson, Nick Jonas, etc. One of the things that's unique about working with Doug is the degree to which the film um, really develops on set. I mean, for Doug, um, the most interesting part of the process is what happens on set and the interaction between the actors and the writer once we're actually there. It's fine in terms of having an idea of walking onto set, of what the scene is going to be, but it never really finds its specificity until we're there and we're shooting it. I think any time you adapt a book, um, especially a book that is beloved, um, you know, a, you have a challenge ahead of you because there's no such thing as a faithful adaptation. Um, you're translating something to a different medium. Um, so hopefully fans will be appreciative of the fact that what is in what is of the essence in the book remains of the essence in the movie. Um, but again, because y y you're doing something in a different medium, there are liberties that you have to wind up taking. Well, actually, I fell in love with the project when I read the book. And uh, I thought it was a beautiful, poetic uh, way to talk about who we are and uh, actually who we would be in an, even in another planet or even in uh, different circumstances that, than, the, than the ones we live right now in this planet. I, I thought it was a beautiful uh, analogy, a very poetic analogy of uh, many different things that we live now. They have established themselves in this little town, you know, and then they realize that uh, there is this thing called the noise that is some kind of a virus that it was there before we arrived. And what happens with that is that suddenly everyone began listening to everybody's thoughts. And that is something that sometimes we wish we could, you know, do to be able to hear what everyone is thinking, because then no one would be able to lie. But then that becomes a problem. That thing that at first, you know, is something like a little bit cool maybe, then it becomes a problem.